Well, this week, Kenya's third president and commander-in-chief of the Defense Forces, Mwai Kibaki, will be accorded full military rights as the state undertakes a funeral befitting a head of state. The late President Kibaki's body is at the Lee Funeral Home and will be moved to Parliament on Monday morning for the public to view him as he lies in state before a funeral is conducted in his honour on Friday. Leila Mohammed outlines the rights of a state funeral. Military tradition dictates that when their general rests, they must accord him full military funeral rites in honor of his service to flag and country. The late Mwai Kibaki commanded the Kenya Defense Forces for 10 years, marshalling the troops into battle in a fight for integrity and Kenya's military incursion in the war on terror. Fire! Fire! A full week of state functions leading up to his burial on the 30th of April is lined up. Uh, and therefore it is a state funeral par excellence and it is being uh, undertaken in a similar manner as those uh, former heads of state, um, Ze Kenyatta and the late President Daniel Arab Moy. The viewing ritual in the British Empire was historically followed by people of all class and status. The bodies of the dead would be prepared and dressed or laid out, then displayed in a room of the family house for two or three days whilst the burial was arranged and visitors paid their respects. The delay between death and burial that lying in state entails was to confirm that death had actually occurred and that the corpse would not again spring to life. So there is, of course, um, various uh, military ceremonies uh, that have to be taken into consideration, of course, they, they are what we call quarter guard. Uh, and um, and uh, there is, of course, a, 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 an officer in charge of the entire operation. In 2020, Brigadier Joachim Mombori led a team of KDF generals who were the official pole bearers of the casket bearing the remains of the late President Daniel Moy. It's really um, uh, a ceremonial uh, gesture, uh, which which is to show utmost respect and the highest um, gratitude for the work that he has done uh, for, for for the country and being the military in uh, you know the commander in chief. Rehearsals were held Sunday at Parliament buildings, where Brigadier Mumburi and Brigadier Jeff Nyaga took the current team of pole bearers, all officers of the rank of brigadier and above, through the paces. For over three decades, Mwai Kibaki was a significant part of Kenya's legislature and it is within the precincts of parliament where his body is going to lie in state for the next three days, a joint gesture by the National Assembly, the Senate and the Kenya Defence Forces in honour of a man whose career service to the nation surpassed many expectations of Kenyans. In a procession on Monday, Kibaki's body will be moved from Lee Funeral Home at 7 a.m., driven down Valley Road, then Kenyatta Avenue, before snaking its way into Parliament Road and be received by the two speakers of Parliament. The casket will be driven in an open back Land Rover, draped in the colours of the national flag. Once it arrives in Parliament, military chaplains will pray over the body that will lay on a table also draped in his presidential standard, which was white in colour. The country's third commander-in-chief was not one to adorn the military fatigues, as has been the practice by his predecessors and his successor, but he made significant choices that saw Kenya cross over into Somalia in an operation to Linda Nchi in the country's first attempt at tackling the war on terror using military interventions. Uh, President Kibaki had to invoke what we call Article 51 uh, of the United Nations Charter to defend itself, uh, and therefore, uh, it did not declare war on Somalia, Operation Lindanchi. It was a short and sharp operation. An attack at the tip of the border in Kiunga on foreigners who were taken to Somalia was the straw that broke the camel's back. The capture of Kismayu in 2012 remains Kibaki's biggest military achievement, one that many world militaries take note of and frequently study how the Kenyan military planned and executed Operation Sledgehammer to retake the port city that had been a critical vantage point for the Al-Shabaab terrorist group for years. President Kibaki took uh, the general strategic 
and you know uh, direction of the country very seriously. In May 2012, Kibaki and the Council from the African Union administered the rehatting of the military operation inside Somalia into a peacekeeping effort which began in 2007. Kibaki's final salute will culminate in a state funeral led by the Defence Forces at Nyayo National Stadium on Friday. Leila Mohamed, NTV.